the Houthis' influence has rapidly grown in the past decade, expanding into most areas of northern Yemen. Their sudden rise to power surprised many who were paying little attention. But what ideas and motives were inspiring their rapid growth? The ideology behind the Houthis is often disputed by many and is a current battleground for political commentators to weigh in on. Welcome to the Thursday Report. It's Ibrahim again. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button to keep track of our content and like the video at the end. Only with your support can we keep making this content as freaking as you'd like to enjoy. Do the Houthis want better representation for the Zaydis, an Islamic democracy? Or is it really just a fully-fledged theocracy with extra steps? You will most likely find all this and more, often parroted by its supporters and opponents. And to be fair, the Houthis have held a contradictory position as the revolution and uprising went by. As Zaydi Muslims, or Fivers, the Houthis believe that Zayd, great-grandson of Ali ibn Abi Talib, was the rightful fifth Imam, in contrast to the Twelvers' belief on the fifth Imamate being his brother, Muhammad al-Baqir and his descendants. Zaydis believe their leadership or Imams must be a descendant from the Prophet Muhammad, be pious, a religious scholar and have no physical imperfections. Their Imams are not infallible. Revolting against them is considered just, especially when they do not rule appropriately. But revolting can only come if you have the backing from other scholars who also descend from the Prophet Muhammad These scholars and families are known as Hashimiyun or Hashemites. And before the modern republican era, Yemen was ruled by a centuries-old Zaydi Hashmi monarchy and imamate that drew its legitimacy from its religious leadership and the Hashemite line of its ancestors. The monarchy came to an end with the Northern Yemeni Revolution of 1962, which was spearheaded by a group of republican-leaning officers of largely Zaydi descent. A civil war erupted with the republicans being backed by Abd al-Nasr's Egypt, while the monarchy was backed by Faisal's Saudi Arabia. The Republicans managed to topple the Kingdom of Yemen, but much of the Zaydi tribal networks that were once loyal to the Imam were largely left to their own devices. Many times backing the Republican rulers such as Saleh, who relied on the loyalty of his own tribe and its allies. The religious Zaydi communities, especially in the north of Yemen, struggled to cope with the changes that were pushed over time during the Republican era, as the state sought to eliminate the social caste system that the Zaydis emphasized. They attempted to so-called modernize the country's social structure. Education wasn't spared by the Republicans. No Yemeni child could go to a Zaydi religious school as a means for a state-recognized education. This positioned the Zaydi scholars against the government of Yemen, at the time largely composed of more secular Yemenis who also belonged to the Zaydi sect. Despite this, the northern Yemeni government commonly used religious scholars' fatwas against the communist South Yemen, maintaining the religious establishment's minor role in politics. The Houthis, as they claimed to be Hashemites, resented the minimization of the Hashemite social caste and the religious scholarship in Yemen's modern history, largely blaming it on Western influence. But what really differs the Houthis' religious approach to Zaydism compared to the more traditional Zaydi scholars? The Houthis mirror a lot of Zaydi positions, but elaborate or completely reject some traditions. Firstly, the Houthis' idea of infallibility of their rulers contradicts traditional Zaydism. Abdu'l-Malik al-Houthi, for example, cannot be seen as a potentially unjust ruler and be overthrown so easily. Their appropriation of Wadi al-Faqih inspired by the Iranian revolution grants him more sacred status than previous Zaydi rulers. Second, connecting ilm with the Qur'an, the Houthis elaborate ilm as something that manifests in a person, or as they say, al-qa'id al-ilm, a so-called visionary leader, overemphasizing the leader as not one who just guides the ummah, but one who embodies the Qur'an itself. The Qur'an is the only sacred text for the Houthis, inspired by some Zaydi books as commentary and philosophy that is not set in stone. To the Houthis, all human literature other than the Qur'an could potentially tarnish the purity of the faith. Finally, the Houthis overwhelmingly emphasize themselves as part of a larger Shia sphere at virtually every opportunity. This may be a surprise to some, but Zaydis in Yemen long saw themselves as belonging to neither the Sunni nor the Shia sect often grouped by Sunnis as Shia and by Shia as outliers of the Shia. Al-Houthi sermons overwhelmingly emphasize Zaydis as an integral part of the larger Shia sphere of influence, closer to Iranian-backed groups and Twelvers. Hussein held extremely hostile view towards traditional Sunni scholarship and figures, whether Salafi or not, in comparison to other Twelvers and Sunni Sufis. This contrasts with the largely more tolerant Zaydi scholarship towards Sunnism and Sunni symbolism in Yemen. 
The Houthis have had their large disputes with traditional Zaydi leaders such as Yahya al-Daylimi and others in their history. Recently, the traditional Zaydi scholars have been largely pushed aside and silenced since the Houthi takeover of northern Yemen. Many Zaydi scholars see the Houthis as markedly more oppressive than the previous regime and even imamates of old, with some scholars reporting that their schools they have previously taught in shut down on the basis that there is no need for them to operate independently anymore and the presence of these books could distract followers from the Qur'an. On the other hand, more politically, the Houthis are markedly aligned with Iran as evident in Hussein and Houthis lectures heard in all mosques in Sa'da, accompanied by supporters chanting their famous slogan Allahu Akbar al mawtu li Amerika al mawtu li Israel Al-la'na ala al-Yahud Al-Nasru lil-Islam these chants could even be heard in front of the American embassy in the capital of Sana'a. The chants taking their inspiration from the Iranian revolution could be credited to Khomeini's pan-Islamic political stances and influence on the group. The Houthis mirrored many of Khomeini's sentiments. They referred to the United States as the Great Satan and claimed that Americans and Israelis were planning to take over the holy sites of Mecca and Medina. Notably, the anti-Semitism in Houthi messaging is more prominent. The focus on cursing the Jews as a central aspect of their flag, the adoption of Nazi-like salutes in marches and their rush to expel the last Jewish family living in Sana'a and northern Yemen in the current civil war. Hussein usually downplays links to Iran or any accusation of subservience, yet he openly views Iran as an example of strength in the Muslim world compared to its Sunni Arab neighbors. Why does he downplay links to Iran? Mainly because the Houthis try hard to unlink themselves from foreign influence, a damage to their legitimacy as a purely local group. As the Houthis claim Salafis and other Yemenis are either Saudi-influenced Salafis or Western-influenced secularists, purely the result of foreign hands. In contrast to his views of Salafi jihadist groups like Al-Qaeda, Hussein views Hezbollah much more favorably, and in his opinion, they are the real head of Mujahideen in this world. They are the ones who present martyrs, the ones who truly preserve the water of the face of the Ummah. The Houthis center themselves in a struggle against the West, heavily mirroring all other pro-Iranian groups, with claims of direct involvement and incubation by the IRGC going back much further than the 2011 civil war. And in 2012, the Houthis confirmed their themes of Khomeini's rhetoric as they published their first manifesto that pointed to the motivations of their actions. The manifesto details the divine right to rule of the descendants of the Prophet Muhammad and endorsing Abd al-Malik al-Houthi as its embodiment, a so-called beacon for the people who will guide them to truth. The document is signed by Abd al-Malik with the title of Alam al-Huda, the icon of guidance. It symbolizes his sacred status as chosen by God, entitled to leadership and his subjects' obedience. The manifesto goes on to detail the Houthi followers' responsibilities. We believe that Allah has favored Ahl al-Bayt and made them guides to the nation and inheritors of Al-Kitab until life ends on earth, as he makes a specific person at a particular time be a beacon for the people and capable of taking care of the Ummah and promoting it in all its fields. We believe that inviting all to do good, promotion of virtue and prevention of vice, as well as standing up to those who are arrogant, are of the most crucial religious duties that people have to do. It is also a religious duty commanded by Allah to be loyal to worshippers of Allah and to be foes of enemies of Allah, according to Sharia, especially the heads of infidelity in our time, foremost among which are America, Israel, and whoever help, befriend, and or stand with them in their hostility against Islam and Muslims. To supplement the spread of their ideology from the ground up, Hussein's lectures form the bulk of the curriculum that the Houthis use as educational material for their followers. They are centered around the importance of jihad against America and Israel, the rejection of reforming religion in any political sense, and the need to preserve the unity of Muslims by avoiding democracy, which he deemed an alien concept whose end goal is to allow Jews to rule over Muslims. One should take note that the Houthis claim to be a transnational group. They claim to be part of the axis of resistance. The group described their aim to expand as part of a Quranic path, which starts in Yemen and ends in the liberation of Jerusalem. Houthis generally categorize their offensives as part of a larger Islamic agenda. They're not fighting to only liberate Yemen, but the Muslim world, even describing their recent actions to conquer Ma'rib as implementing the will of God, and that Ma'rib itself is the gate to Jerusalem. Looking into the material taught and spread in Houthi schools and madrasas, such as the children's magazine called Jihad, one can take notice of the largely central political themes taught to children that reinforce concepts pushed by the Iranian revolution and current day rhetoric from other pro-Iranian militias. 
Here, for example, the magazine features a fictional postcard by an Iranian boy named Salman, probably in reference to the Prophet's companion, Salman the Persian. Salman praises the Iranian revolution for toppling the Shah, describing him as an American agent. The text then goes on to warn children that the US and Israel are trying to incite hatred from Arabs and Muslims against Iran. Salman then urges readers to maintain the line of the revolution and frustrate the schemes of the great Satan, as in the United States of America. In this other example, a collection of Arab countries is demonized, especially Saudi Arabia. They're labeled munafiqun or hypocrites, a term usually used to refer to people who claim to be Muslim but reject Islam or work against their religion in secret, therefore enemies of all Muslims. The illustration features the current UN recognized Yemeni president Mansour Hadi as an example of a munafiq. And the text reiterates that munafiqs can come in the form of groups such as ISIS and the Yemeni Muslim Brotherhood affiliate Al-Islah, and even countries such as Saudi Arabia. The Houthis consequently mirror the Salafi Puritan approach that they criticize. They consider themselves as purifying Islam and unifying Muslims much like Salafi groups. Thanks again for watching our second episode on the Houthis, exploring their ideology. Stay tuned for our next video where we will discuss how the Houthis managed to expand into Sana'a and the rest of northern Yemen in the aftermath of the Arab Spring. I hope you liked this episode and I encourage you all to hit the subscribe button and join our discord for further discussion. See you all in the next one.